ProCam here. I'm going to show you guys how to use these nifty little banana plugs. So I've got links in the descriptions for uh, some of these miniature banana plugs and some glue line heat shrink. Uh, you get uh, 20 pairs for $9. That's pretty good. And then uh, a whole bunch of uh, uh, adhesive lined heat shrink tubing uh, for 15 bucks. I think those are pretty good. So uh, why did I get um, or why did why am I using these? Uh, so I got a DX commander for Christmas and I wanted to use the 30 element, uh, 30 meter element uh, for the 40 meter. And when you do that, you have to uh, wrap basically a loading coil on here and uh, tape it down. And I didn't want to have to keep taping and untaping this constantly. So uh, what I did was uh, I got some of these, these ends because you would have this whole mess of wire just hanging on your mask constantly. So what I did was I went and I got some of these banana plugs and I put one end on here, one end on the rest of the wire. And when I want to use this, get a couple turns out here. I just give it a little twist and stick it in and then I run it up. And yeah, that's probably going to give it a little more wear and tear on this, but that is fine. I expect that that will be part of my regular maintenance when I'm putting this up and taking it down because this isn't a permanent install for me. This is a temporary special occasion kind of install. Um, so I'll just be part of that. Then I just check those to make sure the continuity is good and everything. So with all that said, let's jump over to the workbench. So here are the little banana plugs and I wanted to show for a comparison some bigger banana plugs. So you can see the difference is huge. So to do this, we're gonna need uh, one socket and one plug, one of those, and one of those. We need our two ends of the wire. We're going to strip back just about a centimeter. That's all, we, that's all we need, about a centimeter. Do that on each end. We're going to get uh, whatever side we're going to start with. Let's start with this side. So if you look at this banana plug, this is the, the socket side. Uh, what we can see here is there is an offset small hole here. Uh, the side that this is closest to is the side right here is where we're going to put our solder. So our wire is going to go in here and our solder is going to go in here. And then the side further away is where the banana plug side will plug into. So a couple ways you can do this. I have my plug set in here. You're going to want to put just the tiniest bit of solder on the tip of your iron. So when you touch it to the side here, you get a good heat transfer. And then you can just feed the solder in. Or uh, you can also just try putting your solder directly in there. Uh, I've never done it this way, but I would like to try because it, it seems like it'd be easier. So I just got my little clip of solder in there. So we're just going to tin the soldering iron just uh, the tiniest bit. Okay, now we're gonna touch this and the solder in here should melt pretty quickly. There it goes. And now you could just dip this in and give it to the count about two or three. Let go. Let it, the solder, um, solidify and quick little pull test that's not going anywhere now I did uh, make my length a little long here so I'm gonna trim back my other side before I stick it in 
but even if you do end up with something like this, it's not a huge deal. You can just use the uh, heat shrink that I was recommending. You just slide it over and that will cover up that extra length. So let's do the same thing for the other side. First, I'm gonna trim this back a bit more. Going to do the same thing. There we go. And that's the basics of it. Now you got two connections that you can put together and pull apart. So the next thing you're gonna wonder is how do I keep these from not pulling apart under tension? Well, there's a couple different ways. So I've got this one over here all ready to go with some heat shrink on there. Uh, you can 3D print something like this. This is uh, K6ARK's linked end uh, uh, adapter. And um, you can, oh, I got this backwards. Uh, if I had the right size wire, I would be able to feed this through here do, 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 do. So that would keep tension on the wire and not the end. And then I could secure this in here with some glue or, or something, and then do the same thing over here. And when I'm not wanting it to be linked, I just leave the banana plug in there like that. And then when I do want the longer element, I just click it together like that. So there's this, this method where you have to 3D print this, and this works pretty well, but if you don't have a 3D printer, um, you really could just uh, flip these around like this, just kind of give them a little twist and then connect them. And that's probably not gonna be great for this connection uh, in the long run, but if you're just doing portable or temporary setup, this would probably work just fine. So now I'm gonna show you the secret sauce. This is how you can take and connect these together without having to use a 3D printer and you can tie them together uh, with whatever you potentially have around you. So I've seen it a lot with these S beaners, uh, but there's no reason that you can't do it with a little bit of a 550 cord or even some of this rubber wire. So the important thing to note with 550 cord and this rubber wire is that it does not matter the size of your loops too much just so long as this can reach up past the loop. Um, with the S beaner, it's a, you have to be a little more careful uh, just to make sure you get the distances right. So the, the goal would be to, let's just do a little temporary demonstration here. So the goal would be to have these connected and Pull this up more. You would want that when you put full tension on this part of the wire, it does not pull apart this banana plug. So you just have to pay a little more attention to what you're doing. But it is, I think this is ultimately the best setup here because uh, it's consistent. This is a hard, consistent distance every time. So now that I've got this kind of measured out, let me adjust this a bit more I think that's pretty good I'm putting full tension on here and there's still a little bit of room up here so I am going to keep that loop there I'm gonna pinch that in here and squeeze that down. Uh, I'm actually going to cut this down even more. There we go. So that's a pretty good positioning. Let's go ahead. All right, so I think that one's good to go. Again, just double checking that. This is the spacing I want. Going to, again, cut this. Actually, I'm gonna use this little piece. I'm gonna use this scrap from the other side to see if I can make this work. You can always cut it off and put a different one on, but let's do that. 
So now you can take your ends and have them set up like this. So one piece of wire going this way, one piece of wire going this way. And you say, I need to make this wire electrically longer. You plug it in and there you go. Banana plug's not pulling out. Now this I like more than this because this is intended to be a permanent install on the wire. So then if we have our other wire here, you could do the same thing with just a little bit of 550 cord. Now I'm not a knot master, but I think I could make a knot that will prevent this from slipping. And it's not pretty, but here's our ends that are plugged together. And the paracord's holding. So that's another method of it, uh, which this is also a non-permanent solution. So you could just take this out, say you did. So the camera cut off, but basically what I was saying is the paracord's nice because it is a uh, non-permanent solution to where if I wanted to, I could, after I untie that, I could take this piece of the wire and get rid of it. I don't have to use that extra 30 feet of wire in my system. Uh, this is nice if you only have, maybe you have a, a 60 feet of wire in two 30 foot sections and you only have 30 feet of space to actually run the wire. So now I can take the 30 feet and omit it and just use this extra piece of paracord just to tie off to whatever I can. Another way that I have not tested with is uh, using this rubber wire. So this is just rubber coated steel wire and I'm not sure if this will import any kind of capacitive coupling to these different elements because of the, the metal core, uh, but I don't think it would induce much if any capacitance or uh, that's something I could test in the future. Um, but I think that this might be a, a decent way to do it. So we're just gonna twist those over and, and give them a little twist like a bread tie. There you go. So now that's keeping those two ends together so I can plug this in and there we go. And this is also a I think this, I like this solution because uh, I'm not a knot master, so I don't have to know my knots as well, and I can just do this to get by if I have to. Well, that's about all the time I have for today. Uh, what else do you think we can use these little connectors for? I love how small and compact they are. They're not giant bulky connectors. Anyway, that's it, 73.